They say you should never meet your heroes, but today I am going to be meeting one. You see, when I was five years old, Need for Speed Most Wanted was one of the hottest games around. And just like any other impressionable five-year-old, it started my current addiction for cars. And today I am going to be meeting one of the starter cars in Need for Speed Most Wanted, which is this. The Toyota Altezza or the Lexus IS200, either way you look at it. This is Auto Culture, this is Soham Saraf and welcome to the Drivers Hub. Now before everyone starts crying in the comments saying that oh the Lexus IS200 and Toyota Altezza weren't the starter cars, I know, I know it's not the full fat Batman but at least I'm meeting Robin and this will give us a good basis on what the Lexus IS platform or the Toyota Altezza is all about. The Toyota Altezza or the Lexus IS was Japan's answer to cars like the BMW 3 Series and Mercedes C-Class. With a front-engined, rear-wheel drive platform and the engineering of the car done by the legendary, I am going to butcher this name, Nobuaki Katayama, the same genius who designed the A86 Corolla, the Altezza platform was always going to be super fun to drive. The Altezza and the Lexus IS came in a bunch of variants starting from this, the IS200 which got the 2.0-litre 3SG which was a NA inline 4. It also got the 1G FE which was a 2.0-litre inline 6 and the Holy Grail which was the 2JZ GE which was a 3.0-litre inline 6 which was of course shared with the Toyota Supra. Now when people say JDM, they claim that their Honda City VTEC is JDM or something like that. Well no, your Honda City VTEC is not JDM, whereas this is a proper JDM. The owner has to import parts from Japan to maintain this car and it's a whole hassle. But I mean just look at it, it's one of the most simple looking yet most beautiful and elegant looking cars around. And, and I mean even after almost 20 years, it still looks timeless I would say. This car has been fitted with the RS kit from factory. It is not any sort of aftermarket body kit and that's why the fitment is so great. And I just love the classic three box design that this car comes with. It just looks elegant, it just looks simple. And it's running on some really nice Lenzo wheels. And overall, it's just a very nice looking car. It has some key elements like when you head towards the back, you have that classic four dot kind of headlight style that uh, Lexus and uh, Toyota had come up with in the early 2000s, which is very iconic for this car. And overall, I mean, I just can't stop saying it. It looks very elegant and timeless. People love the design of the car so much with its distinct rear tail lights, aggressive yet elegant front end and almost perfect proportions that it was awarded car of the year in Japan in its debut year. Hop into the Altezza and the first thing that you notice is all of the Japanese writing around the car. You have one over here near the gear selector and this little remote over here. So this little remote is actually uh, used for the GPS navigation system which comes in the Altezza and in the UK it was a 2100 pound option which means in around today's day and time it's around 250,000 rupees just for a GPS navigation system. Uh, apart from that the steering wheel is also shared with the Supra but whereas the Supra got the Toyota logo in the middle on the uh, Altezza steering wheel you have the Altezza logo in the middle. Uh, in the instrument cluster, you have a very simple instrument cluster. On the left hand side, you have your rev counter. In the middle, you have a very fancy looking speedometer. And on the right hand side, you have your gear shift indicator, uh, which shows you which gear you're in. And you have your fuel meter. Overall, the cabin is a very simple cabin, just like the car from the outside. And I think so, I need to stop blabbering and take it for a quick spin. Okay, so first off, this car is super low and since this is a naturally aspirated engine, you can really really feel the raw character of this engine and this 2 litre uh, inline 4 engine sounds amazing. And especially with this Magnaflow exhaust system which has been developed by Magnaflow and fitted by CS4 Performance, give it a little revs. <laughs> Sounds absolutely glorious. Maybe the 
little problem with this car i would say is this 5 speed uh, automatic i mean there there are worse transmission than this but uh, it's not my favorite thing of course like most jdm engines you have the option of doing some plumbing in the engine bay area and putting a big fat turbo inside the owner is in the works of doing something like that he's either looking at a supercharger or a turbocharger i mean after some forged internals and some mods here and there like a bigger turbo and everything this thing is capable of pushing out some really really impressive horsepower numbers the lexus is and the toyota altis are used to come with a bunch of engine variants so this is the base variant which is the 2 liter four cylinder and you obviously used to get the 2jz as well in the form of the lexus is 300 and toyota altis are with the same engine and that car was the proper uh, starter car in need for speed most wanted with the 2jz and unfortunately this isn't that car but this is no less than special because according to the owner there are only 3 toyota altezas or lexus is 200s in india so only 3 i mean just think about it for one second lamborghini huracans ferrari 488s are more common than this car over here now he is expecting a few more altezas and lexus iss to pop up in the coming few years because of the more and more popularity that these jdm cars are getting but i mean the fact that you can argue that a old jdm car is more rare than a proper thoroughbred supercar is absolutely insane now the steering wheel like i said is shared with the toyota supra and i love the way it feels the uh, hand grip is just spot on and it's a very direct steering wheel you can instantly feel what's going on there's no dead spot whatsoever and it feels like a proper thoroughbred sports sedan for some reason even though it's maybe proper inception was not meant to be a sports sedan well if you find one which i'm pretty sure you won't because there are only 3 in the country as of now uh you should really go put the money and just buy it it's just an amazing car the tuning potential in this thing is just endless like any other japanese car maybe the one little problem that i have with it is probably this 5 speed automatic but i mean it's not very difficult to swap in a 6 speed manual transmission uh, from a different toyota into this car so that's not a problem at all and you put probably 10 12 lakhs which sounds like a huge figure and if you put that in you have a car which is going to be i guess 500 horsepower so that's going to be absolutely insane if the owner is able to do something like that and on that bombshell i would like to say thank you so much for watching this is the toyota altezza give yash savant 19 on instagram a quick follow because he's the owner of this car and he keeps on posting regular updates on this i'll see you in the next one now